Hello, it's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Oh, the Agilu in the building. Welcome back. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Outfit. Thank you. House of BC. Ah, nice. Hey, bye, BC. <laughs> so, I'm um, doing sales, basically. That's what's been happening. And I'm trying to, it seems like um, 24 hours is not enough because I have a lot to do. Yeah. I went to the warehouse yesterday, got back all my inventory. Yeah. I'm trying to record them into the system yeah. so that when we do the physical sales, we know what we are taking off. Because I'm going to be at the Lagos Street Fair in November. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so, so it's a lot of work. In fact, my sitting room upstairs is full with goods. Oh. A guy shouting, what's the meaning of this? <laughs> <laughs> I see Uncle, get, you need me, to get, a store. get me a shop. Yes, you need to get a store so that you we can know. at least. So it's inventory. Once I leave here and I'm heading home, we start yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. Alaja Nima Akasha Zibiri. How you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, fine. Is... Hmm? I'm fine. Uh, stereo. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what is going on. No, I'm okay. Uh, so uh, how are you Yesterday doing? I was at uh, the birthday party of Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa yeah, O-O-N. We yes. got to add that to the name now. <laughs> and it was also her 60th birthday yesterday. She was... can dance. She will bend down. She was, only that. She was also singing. <laughs> she was <laughs> singing. I mean, she was ready for that party. Like a bride that is ready for her dance. Uh, it was nice. Was her birthday, man. And she she was surprised. Her son 16. showed up, you know. Mm. Traveled in and showed up and she was uh. shocked. Um, she started just started crying when she saw her son. Uh, it was just a nice time to be around. And, and Abuja was gridlock. You know how they complain that Lagos has traffic? There was traffic everywhere because everybody, the lots of the O.O.N. honorees, mm -hmm. and their family and friends, oh. they were all having parties. So everyone yes, was and, having um, parties around. Wasn't the Fashola also got a COA? Yes, so mm. that's true. And for last day, okay, I got M.O.N. Yes. Yes. She also had lunch yesterday. So, I mean, lots of people got to watch. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. But, you know, I, I mean, it, it's, it's good to know that um, people mm -hmm. are awarded for the work they've done. All right, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award winning. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. I'll leave a secured country, Buhari assures Nigerians. IMF cuts Nigeria's economic growth to 3.2%. Strike how House of Reps brokered truce between federal government and ASU. Lagos monarch disowns wife over the deputy governorship ticket. Lagos gets approval for Lekki Airport. Oyo Assembly kicks over EFC's invitation to members. Why I am yet to release manifesto by OB. Dangote Obajana cement properly acquired. All right, which story are we starting with? Oh, yeah, certainly. So I was shocked to see the clerk of the uh, uh, House of Assembly in Oyo, you know, um, write query mm -hmm. an EFC, EFCC invitation to members of the House to come into, to come and ha assist with information on an investigation on the finances of the Oyo State House of Assembly. So the EFCC had written that they are probing the finances of the House of Assembly in Oyo, and immediately they went to court to try to stop them, saying that they contravene Section 125 of the Constitution, which forbids any, any security agency from investigating the finances of the House of Assembly of any state and, put, and resides only that power with the Auditor General of the state. Now, this is a court matter, but they are then saying, without getting um, an injunction against the EFCC to not 
come and investigate that. And so the um, clerk of the house, Mrs. Yetunde Awe, wrote a letter to the EFCC querying the propriety of their actions mm. and said, telling them to stay off business of the house. So the house is not in any way, in, the members of the house are not in any way immune. Mm. And so they can be invited by any security agency in the course of investigating anything. Yeah. So that's a separate matter from investigating the finances of the house. So whether the EFCC is investigating the finances of the house is a different matter. But whoever they want to invite, I think they can, the, invite. Yeah. can invite. Well, them. I don't know what they're trying to hide anyway. We'll okay. So uh, the federal government um, has given approval for building of an airport in Lekki by the Lagos state government. The airport, um, the first phase of which would cost about $900 million, mm. say mm. to cater to about 5 million air passengers around Lekki. Why are you dancing? Mm. Aja and Ebe exists annually. Now, um, the approval letter was presented to Governor Babajide Sowolu by the Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika at the ongoing 9th Ehimbeti Lagos Economic Summit. The theme is Lagos State 2022 to 2052, charting the path to sustainable socioeconomic growth. So, uh, Sirika said that the airports, uh, when it's completed, will not only make Lagos accessible to everyone, but to also spur commerce and you know, take trade to a greater level. And the governor was very, very um, interested and happy with this, saying that um, the airport will serve the interests of the people. They are trying as much as possible to make businesses easy, you know, improve on the infrastructure of business. And they have because a 30-year plan yeah. for Lagos. It's you know? like the only subnational that is doing national things, like the kind of railroads they are doing now, they are mm. going to build airports. Ugh. It's just, yeah, it's quite ambitious. It's a special, he's been asking for special, special status. status. Well, not that yet to give them the special status. But you, you can imagine the traffic. Uh, yeah, you know, I get that. that Let me take this human interest story. So, Olojawe Me Oba Kamoru Din Anima Shaun has disowned his wife. She went to go and pick up a governorship, a deputy governorship ticket under the Social Democratic Party. Her name is Olori Murenike Abeni. He said, I would like to say, officially say, I have no idea. She did not discuss with me that she wanted to go and pick up the government ticket. <laughs> that he is a supporter of the government. Of the <laughs> how how Politics. does it work? Like, she didn't take my permission. So I'm thinking, that's a hot topic. Yeah. Do you need your husband's permission or your wife's permission to take, to take an yeah, yeah, the Africa, The African man. Wife. Leave over. Leave over. Leave over. Because you are, the African you have, man. You have an You ambition. need to take permission. Oh, oh, no. To come and talk listen, listen, you are married to the head of listen, the tradition. Listen, you have a political ambition. You go maybe God has called you yeah. to be a politician. Yeah. Mm. And this woman has now said, it is SDP I want. Yeah. And my husband is yeah, the other example. One. He's like, no, they have to. So can can she have... With... So he has dissociated himself from her. said, I don't know. She didn't discuss with me. With that. In fact, he was and then divorcing. <laughs> <laughs> and the people didn't say that. <laughs> let's move on, I beg. Is there another story in mission that was important? Mm. Let's move on. Quickly to the punch. Presidential fleet funding rises to 81 billionaire under Buhari. Nation building requires sacrifice by retails 450 on Rees. Austin Archie's husband abused her, singers, ex employees tell court. Flood kills 500 injured, 1,546, says federal government. Lagos developer defrauds 200 house seekers. Victims believe police. A bad general acquisition followed due processes. The Dangote. Um, OB unveils campaign team today on Hanese Lords of Ferry. Asu awaits Buhari on no work, no pay, holds neck meeting. Okay, which story are we starting with? The human. Hmm. So the landlady of one story building, identified as Kudirat, allegedly connived with an agent, Tunde Nojim, hmm. Nojim Dean, to perpetrate Nojim fraud. Nojim. No, Jim Mudin. There's no model. <laughs> they spelled it in English, and I called it in English. So, <laughs> um, they had collected money from over 200 mm. uh, tenants, mm. supposed tenants, that they had apartments to give them, only for them to arrive there on the 24th of September and found that they had only 14 flats. Mm. The guy ran away. The landlord was nowhere, a landlady was nowhere to be found. But later on, they were able to report them to the police station. And these tenants were crying. Some of them said they didn't have any other place to stay. They paid from 300000 to 500000 One of the um, guys was saying that his wife just put to bed and they don't have, in fact, they are you know, crashing in the pastor's house because they were thinking that their house would be ready at the moment. Then they are taking the matter to the police station. I wanted, uh, they transferred it to the State Criminal Investigation Department, Yaba. And they realized that um, the state CID was requesting for 50,000 naira each 
before the case would be processed. That's from the people who had lost money already. And they said they didn't have the money. So they reported the matter to the um, Deputy Commissioner of Police who gave a waiver and said they don't need to pay that money. However, the matter had not been taken up. Uh, some people are saying that it seems like the man, that's the um, agent, has been conniving with the police. That he, in fact, the police not even pick him up. He went there himself, mm. submitted himself after investigation. They let him go. That he's been conniving with the police. He pays them off. And he's been doing this to so many other people over the years. So they are calling on the Lagos State Government to do something about these uh, 200 people who have lost money. Mm. And then the advice is, before you make that kind of payment, you need to do due diligence. Fraud is fraud. They should mm. catch that man arrest him and deal, prosecute him, take him to court and deal with him. How many investigations can you make before you pay for something? People set up online stores, do um, adverts, and then they are ripping people off and you cannot do investigations. Right. How many investigations can you do? It must be consumer protection. Um, okay. The floods. So finally, we heard the federal government on the flood through the ministry, the PAMSEC Ministry of... Um, the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. So they called the meeting among stakeholder, um, sorry, relevant agencies, you know, responding to the flood across the country. And they admitted that they lost 500 persons to these floods that happened across the country. 45,249 houses have been damaged. 70,566 hectares of farmland. Just imagine that have been destroyed due to the flood. And they compared the magnitude of this flood to that that happened in 2012, saying that, you know, they've not seen this type in the, in, in the past. But Nema in this report now talked about what they found out by 9th of October. They said that the, the water level in Lokoja and Makodi, those cities along the River Niger and the River Benue, rose to 11% above mm. recorded level in 2012 so far. And this is what they've noticed that, one thousand one million um one one point four million persons lost affected were affected by the floods and displaced by the floods over seven hundred and ninety thousand people displaced one thousand five hundred people injured mm. i love that they've taken this inventory i want to see what they will plan mm -hmm. to do how we will respond it. to to know the crisis that come with flood mm. after post flood you have you might have an epidemic because you know yeah. um, water diseases will be spread yeah. Um, you have people displaced, of course. You've lost uh, livelihoods, farm products, and all of that. So we might have drought, and we might have, you know, lack of uh, food. So I want to see okay. what they'll do to respond. Let me take the major headline. So um, this is a report by Punch. says that um, um, the presidential air fleet has risen by 121% in the last eight years. According to this report, uh, our president... Um, fleet has... Uh, let, me, let me give the breakdown. So according to them, 62 points. Four billion has been used for the operations and maintenance of the aircraft. They have about ten aircrafts in the presidential fleet, mm. and seventy point two billion for foreign and local trips. <coughs> two billion earmarked for other related expenses. And according to them, they had tried to sell off two of of his aircrafts, um, which and they had buyers who had offered about twenty four million dollars. But unfortunately, they reneged and said that they would, <coughs> they didn't want to pay that much. They wanted to now pay eleven million dollars. But the point is that the cost of maintaining our president's presidential fleet has risen, according to this report on Punch, to 81.8 billion naira. That is, that is a conversation we need to have because we're trying to say cost of governance is yes. mm -hmm. reduced. Um, it, there was a, I mean, Punch did a real thorough report on how the president and vice president have, uh, what they spent on various travels across the world and um, what, what, what's being used specifically for the maintenance of their aircrafts. Why do they have 10 presidential fleets for, for going around 10. We have 10 presidents. No, not 10 <laughs> anyway. presidents. They have That's eight, eight it's now. It's a conversation. It's a conversation worth we having. Have so it's yeah. a mini look at this report. Um, says that um, Nigeria over borrowing to fund non essential items, and president has had failed to uphold mm -hmm. the pledge to reduce the aircraft within the presidency. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. 
we need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm, so have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered? Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss... Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing points. You got to take it. Yes, so the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, is still awaiting the decision of the president, uh, President Mohamed Buhari, on the no work, no pay rule invoked by the federal government since they started the strike eight months ago. Then um, they said the president's deci decision on the matter is key to the decision of the union, and they cannot do anything without that decision. It also helped them determine whether they should call off the strike or continue the strike. So they said um, um, that it's only the president that can give the grants the waiver for the areas of the striking lecturers to be paid or not to be paid. And they are still waiting for that particular issue to be resolved. However, ASU is planning to have a meeting with his um, you know, counterparts all over the country to determine where to go uh, forward, whether to go forward or not. And they have not said the day that they are going to be doing the meeting. Hopefully, yeah. something will come out of it. Okay, so quickly, just since we've been taking the Obajana, Dangote, and the Kogi State government mm -hmm. story. So the Dangote Industries Limited, which is the parent body of the Dangote Cement, has issued a statement that they acquired the land solely, the, the land on which the, in the Dangote Cement is built in Kogi, they acquired it solely in 2003, and they paid taxes since 2007 to the Kogi state government, and that they had to issue this following, you know, the accusations that they should come and show papers and all of that, and that at the time of our, in our present economic circumstances, it's become important that, you know, they do the right thing to to acquire and right. employ people and create businesses. Basically, they're just saying we have due papers. 
So let's see what the okay. government will do. Let's move on quickly to the Nigerian Tribune. How Nigerian doctors, other foreigners are exploited in the UK. That's the BBC report. Wiki appoints 14,000 advisors, 359 liaisons, <laughs> officers. God. Crude oil theft. Clark calls for judicial inquiry into the military's complicit. Uh, I will hand over Nigeria free of its insecurity, says Buhari. Our acquisition of Bajana cement plants followed due process. Someone who receives Febiji's letter, <laughs> approval letter for Lekki Airport. And expect high intensity rain at the River Rhine flooding. Nightmare warns um, north central and southern states. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let's start with the major headline. Yes, so it's a deep mm -hmm. story. So Nigerian doctors uh, recruited to practice in the United Kingdom are being professionally exploited. This was a report that was written by uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC. And um, they said that doctors are being overworked to the detriment of the patients. There's also a possibility of the laws being broken in recruitment process mm -hmm. as being handled by a British healthcare company. Now, the report states that um, the investigation found evidence that doctors from Nigeria are being recruited by a British healthcare company and expected to work in private hospitals under conditions not allowed in the National Health Service, that's the NHS. And the British Medical Association was quoted describing the situation as shocking. So when they brought it to them, they said that the matter was shocking to them, saying that the sector needed to be brought in line with the NHS. NHS. So, a BBC mm -hmm. had to, you know, speak to some of the practitioners and um, a particular doctor who said he works in Health Leeds Hospital that was recruited in 2021, Augustine Enekwechi, said his hours were extreme. He has to work 24 hours a day for a week and he was put in that hospital space. He was not allowed to go out. So, he felt like he was in prison meant to deliver. So they said the tiredness was very intense. There were times he was worried he could not properly function. And that was also, he was so scared it was also going to affect the patient he was, you know, being treated. Uh, British, um, the companies organizing this recruitment, you know, denied, they said there's nothing like that happening. However, there's the report that 92% had been recruited from Africa and 81% were specifically from Nigeria. And they all complained about excessive working hours and unfair salary deductions. So I think there was a time the World Health Organization warned that they should not actively recruit from, you know, underdeveloped countries. They should focus on building their own doctors. But that warning was not heeded. They still went ahead. They were recruiting from places like Ghana. Um, there were other countries aside from Nigeria that had their doctors all over in the UK. And all of them <coughs> kept complaining that they said when they came down to countries like nigeria they saw that they were uh, you know examinations that uh, doctors needed to if uh, to write to be able to go to the uk and if you see the masses gathering their doctors that are ready to write these examinations because everybody wants to go for the better conditions but they are not really having a good time and they are not treated like other doctors their counterparts in that place we need to review this mm. this jabba jabba that we are all trying to jabba well, at the end of the day, it influx. may not really pay. Yeah, well, the, it, it, when, when it there's... It becomes an issue of cheap yes. labor, right? Yeah, yeah. They, it's cheap they, labor. It's worth discussing, it's, it's, you're right. It's also better when, you know, when people are thronging in an area, it's also better to, you know, be, do your own with clarity and reach a clear contract. Most of them are on contract. I was going to take the story on um, the leader of the Pan Niger Delta Forum, Pan Def, as Chief Edwin Clark, has called on the judiciary... Uh, to, increase, uh, to increase the inquiry on the um, crude oil theft that has led to the dwindling le revenue in the country. He was specifically saying that um, he, they discovered about four kilometers of pipe, illegal pipeline that has been planted, that it's, that it's beyond the, um, the, the, the manager deltans who are restive, but this is more like a mafia-like um, organized crime. That have international backing wow. and that they need to really um, look into it. Let me see, really set up the news. There's their, their illicit four kilometer pipeline through which crude oil is being siphoned goes to confirm what they've always been shouting about that the issue of theft, oil theft is perpetuated not just by the locals but by mafia like groups with connivance of some people in the industry using sophisticated engineering methods to carry out their nefarious activities. So hmm. this, this, this is worth a proper judicial inquiry into mm -hmm. and see. Because I know I saw a documentary recently on this. this, they are, they are, they are, and, and those things are not being 
installed manually. Mm-hmm. They have to be heavy duty machines. machines. How do those things say they have support of the military? They have support of security operatives, and they have they have, they have total um, backing with various um, uh, various bodies who are supporting them. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Can't act as if we don't see these things. Plenty of people now in Chopper. It's well. It's, it's sad, but you know my my personal person, Governor Wiki. <laughs> ah, our cousin. The, 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 the fourteen thousand <laughs> cousin. <laughs> he takes no prisoners. <laughs> appointed That's exactly fourteen thousand. Advisors for various political units in the states. 99 hours to his exit. You know, give a bad name. He said they are advisors for political units. Hmm. And um, as according to the spokesperson, the advisors will play a, a vital role in the administration mm. of his state. Just as he was on his way at, he also employed, um, appointed 319 world liaison officers and 40 local government liaison local government area liaison officers that you know he says they work with immediate effect appointment mm-hmm. takes immediate effect oh, wow on the way out who's going to pay them maybe he will, he's planning to pay from oh. his personal coffers which coffers <laughs> it's river state. Are is river this state needed people? at the time i don't understand there are river state people working for river state he has what nine months or how many how many months does he have to leave there are river state people working for river state i've said Okay, mm. so th- some things are left unsaid. <laughs> Any other story we have? To, how much time do we have? You know, we have just we two have more minutes. Done. Any other stories in... Um, mm. I think we're actually done. The Guardian? Let's move very quickly to The mm. Guardian. Mm. Why decorates <clears throat> Lawan Okonjo, Wela, UN Scribe and others? Stop. Blame games. Campaign with Buhari's records. PDP tells ruling party. Lagos received the approval for the Lekki Airport. We talked that already. Uh, Peter Obi says he's uh, a national, Obi, a national <coughs> movement, Ohanese declares. Um, how military corrupt NNPC officials, others steal Nigeria's crude oil, and IMF downgrades Nigeria's growth prospects amid pessimism and ten- tension. You have the, somebody had a I term. have the, yes, Obi story, but yeah. not this particular one, but let me just take it. So the presidential candidate of the Labour Party and former governor of Anambra State, Mr. O, Peter Obi, explained uh, why he will not release his party's manifesto in the 2023 general election yet. So he said, uh, he was interviewed uh, by the BBC and he said he was waiting for the positions of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, before releasing his manifesto. And, um, you know, they said he's been enjoying the wave of support of um, the youth, and he's facing serious criticisms for not uh, releasing his manifesto. Everybody wants to see the manifesto. So he said that... um, he will unveil it sometime next week. So let's hope that we'll get to see what he has to offer. But his um, main, according to him, he said his main focus will be on moving Nigeria from consumption to production. production. So let's see what he comes up with. Okay, I think that is all we can take on Front Page View. When we come back, bring in our guests from FBN Quest. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. 
Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Thanks for staying with us. Talking, um, joining us on the show to talk about digital assets is the head private trust FBN Quest trustees, Mr. Rutimi Obende. Welcome to the show. Thank you very Good much. To have you on the show. So, um, we've seen FBN Quest come for several things. You talk, discuss education trust, you've had various types of trust. <clears throat> now we heard digital assets. We know what digital assets are. Well, how do you put that in trust and that's the very question so let's, let's start for those who don't have digital assets what are digital assets and how do you put that in the trust okay so let's start from trying to remind ourselves what a trust is a trust is an arrangement that you can decide to put in place 
and you then ask FBN Quest trustees to manage that entire process for you. It involves advisory. It involves helping you to manage the assets that you want to put in the trust arrangement. Now, traditionally, the assets that we know are real estate or investments in stocks and shares or with banks, fixed deposits. Mm. But when you talk about <coughs> digital assets, you are looking at assets that physical assets that you find online so you are looking at social media accounts you are looking at blogs you're looking at um, patents you are looking at copyrights these are assets that people make money from mm. the, the, the internet is a huge market and um, just to say that and put that in proper context because a lot of money is made you I'm sure you've heard of people that somehow built multi-million or owned multi-million properties as a result of blocks that they own. Mm. So these are digital assets. Yeah. We are then telling you, put that entire arrangement in a trust such that if anything then happens, we're looking at either a capacitation or the ultimate, which is dead. Um, a trust company then manages that entire process. Royalties, for example monies that come in. Mm. As they keep coming, who do you want to be the beneficiaries of the arrangement that you have put in place? That's the entire concept of um, digital trust. Digital trust. So that has to do with um, even content. So for instance, I produce content and I can put my content in your trust and be paying something, right? Or how does that work exactly? Okay, so you have content yes. and people have subscribed to, to the that content. content yeah. Yeah. So in putting that into a trust arrangement, you are essentially saying that, okay, um, from the content to um, subscription to ensuring that when, even when people come to view the content that you have put out there, that entire arrangement is what you are putting in a trust, trust. arrangement. So let's take this show, for example. Um, let's say in another 10 years, you probably might not be the one sitting here, but contents have been built over time. It's possible that you have an arrangement in place where royalties come to the founding founders of this, or more that's permit me, of this particular show. <laughs> founding so, sisters, please. Founding sisters <laughs> of this you. particular show. What then happens is that you can sit in the comfort of your own People view this show, they pay maybe a subscription for it, or you mm. get royalties from it. The we money that the come benefits. in, the benefit comes to you. You can then decide thereafter that those benefits should go to my children or great grandchildren, depending on. I've done that. Structure I've come, I've come in, the, in the beginning when we started. Start you can see do it again. Now. Don't do ten years. Now. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter. So, I don't know as part of that average, but but a lot of um, you know it's a wide market. This yeah. influencing right. business, yeah. a lot of people constantly. Yes, they were. Myself and my husband late nights were watching one content like that. We really thought these guys are in huge markets. They mm. do a lot of work. You know, they that's do creativity. But you own um, maybe a social media page where you put your content and you grow your numbers. What exactly would you fear for someone who just maybe has one controversy and numbers just drives in? What would you fear? How do you think people steal content? What exactly should you be doing online? Okay, so in, f from the trust aspect, you're looking at ensuring that you have put an arrangement in place with the creator of the trust. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the security, and that's where it's important that you don't just, you are not just on your own. You're mm -hmm. speaking with people that can help you ensure that there's security in place. The, even the content you then push out, it's important that you have conversation with maybe like a team such that you are not putting out the wrong content because like you said, that can throw or be sure down. that your followers <coughs> just crash in a matter of seconds. So once you have a trust in place, the trustee constantly monitors. Just please note that it's monitoring and advisory mm -hmm. services that we provide mm -hmm. such that you are then able to grow that brand. But what is of essence, how importantly to us, is ensuring that even when you are no longer there, you have employed one or two people, mm -hmm. your your page continues to function. Some of mm -hmm. us have contracts with big companies, advertising contracts, and you are earning money on an annual basis. That money can keep flowing to your generation. So it's generational wealth transfer on its own, and it's also ensuring that people are employed, people are get paid, and your blog or your, your website or your social media page continues to flourish. So what would you say? How do you come in? If I have a social media page, for instance, I manage it, they pay me, I take my money directly, and then I can then, you know, transfer to you. But if you want to come in, do you take over 
the payment side or you know control of the page? We, everything can be put under the trust. So mm -hmm. in terms of generating content, how do you get your content? What kind of agreements? do you have in place? Mm -hmm. Now, when you are no longer there, because I'm in the picture, I can continue to manage that process. Mm -hmm. We generate content. How do we then distribute the content? I can continue to distribute the content mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not only when you are... So when I talk about when you are no longer there, there's a possibility of age, yes. there's a possibility of um, complications, inmate, and all of that. So, mm -hmm. it's, so it's important that we manage all of those processes. Exactly and ensuring that we are then able to transfer not from me, just me but to the next generation and the generation but who would you say to. requires digital asset because yeah now we're hearing maybe influencers but who else in this range do you think should need this digital estate plan so apart from influencers you have people trading massively online um, okay. so there are Commerce. people that have um, online wallets cryptocurrency so just imagine you are the only one that knows your password Mm -hmm. And you have maybe, in terms of cryptocurrency, close to 500 million or 100 million. What then happens to that? What, you know, you, you are the only one with the password. Mm. If you pass away today, your family that's members have no, to, no yes. think your access to how they, they, yes. they... So for proper, maybe you have real estate, it's, but your family then knows what to do. Or you have investments in shares and stock. But if it's cryptocurrency, <laughs> or if you have a wallet that you have loaded dollars even your bank accounts that have online passwords what do you do to all of these these are the conversations that we are speaking about so when is the right time to start considering all of this insurance is it till you have something substantial or as you're just starting life you can find ways to put something in trust so she spoke about us that we should have been here 10 years ago. Unfortunately, we were not here 10 years ago. Your so fault. For her, 10 years would have been the most appropriate time. However, if you look at your structure today, today might just be the, the best time. time to put that in place. Look mm. at your followers 10 years ago. I'm not sure they are the, as much as they are today. Mm. Now you have a proper brand a proper structure. segment there's a proper <clears throat> structure what then happens to the ownership what happens to the income that will be earned in future you can't put a structure in place now and don't wait for another 10 years mm. before you then say ah you came late i'll say that when you're starting off think about it clearly and when even when you have made progress five ten years what is important is take is take stock of where you are today mm. and ask yourself if i'm not there Will this blog, will this website, will this content continue to grow? Now, content it also includes music. Um, a lot of today our artists have content <laughs> online that people are subscribed to. Into, yeah. I'll give you an example, Bob Marley. I like this example a lot and I tend to use it because today Bob Marley's brother is the one benefiting from all his royalties. His family members, when I say family members, wife and children, are not getting anything at all. Mm -hmm. And wow. that's because he didn't have this structure in place. You want to be able to avoid that, mm -hmm. such that first line of benefits or beneficiaries are your family members, your spouse, surviving spouse, and your children. That's important because, again, whether we like it or not, they are the ones that we are working for. They are the ones who wake up on a daily basis trying to take care of. Interesting. So... For, ex for example, now, the, the, the people out there saying, and I think <coughs> they want to know exactly at what point they invite you in. So I think you try to answer, ask that question. And I need that, just to go back to what Emma was saying. So now I have a page that is making money. Mm -hmm. Something happens to that person. And because the person is the content. The person can't create that content anymore. So, the, so is it that FBN will now continue with the content or is the one that is already existing, they continue to manage or my generation or they'll just create content just to keep the page going or what exactly both we can do both we can start to manage the contents that have already been created and that's why if you then bring us in now we can start the content generation and even understand the content generation um, again we need to be able to tell ourselves that it should not be a one-man show Mm -hmm. Where issues come up is where you have a one-man show. So where you are the only content creator, when you pass away, nobody's creating content anymore. Mm -hmm. So who then manages what comes to you? Because whether you like it or not, money will keep coming to you. Mm -hmm. You have, whether it's a YouTube channel or an Instagram channel that people will view, and there's some kind of subscription that you would have put in place. That money will keep flowing, and you want your 
family members, dad or mom, if they are still alive, yes. or children to take um, advantage of that structure. Wrap up. Well, thank you so much. I think this is a good initiative. So in a, in a nutshell, because I've been hearing from FBN almost quite very frequently, so I think in a nutshell, you are, you, you're falling against one-man business. You're trying to sell people that once you have something going, give us, get us involved for longevity. Get us involved to help you sustain that so that even anything happens, at least if it be digital, be it education, be it anything, we are there to support you mm. to ensure that those who you expect to benefit will benefit from your work and hard work. That's fantastic. Okay, that's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we go to our hot topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics. And you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on your view, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award winning 24 hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music, and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali, and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world class.
thanks for staying with us. So earlier in the day, I took a story about Oloja um, Obekwe about Kamoru Dean and Nifma Shaun, who dissociated himself from his wife. And according to me, it was because she's uh, belonging to a completely different political party as his than his. And <coughs> she has offered herself to receive the deputy governorship ticket in her party. That's the SD. DP. He didn't tell us the party that he is a part of, or he just says the ruling party. Um, but that brings the conversation of politics, especially this season where everybody, there are various ideologies, various uh, groups, people are uh, being swayed, people are thinking this is what we want to go with. Homes are divided, husbands and wives are divided, mothers and fathers are divided, brothers and sisters are divided. Fathers and children, mm. or even mothers, because I remember Governor Baseke, I think, was saying that his child is, <coughs> is, um, is, 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 I think, I can't remember Labour the party, party. Labour Party. His child is Labour Party and he's here, he's PDP. Mm -hmm. So there are homes that are divided and mm. the conversation is how do we manage it, especially bringing it back to this man where we're saying that does his wife need permission to run her own uh, political ambition? under a different party must we bring politics into marriage should marriage be into politics that's the conversation this morning you can call us on the numbers on the screen 0812 you can also tweet to us at tvc connect please hashtag your view tvc so we can read your tweet now this is also important because there's a lot of division out there there's a lot of friction you know and people are just People want everybody to be on their side. Yeah. It's my way or the highway. Yeah. They believe that only... So they, and, and we goes away from the ideology. So it's the same way where a Man U fan, I'm a Chelsea fan. I respect that you're Man U and you respect that I'm Chelsea. We meet, we can, we can, we can yab, but the next day we are boys. Why can't we bring that also into this political arena as we're having this? Let me, let me hear your thoughts on this. <laughs> hey, when it comes to marriage, it's a different ball game. Because there are some expectations that, you know, uh, marriage gives, especially in this part of our world where the man is the authority, is, we're in patriarchy, you know now, the man is the head, you are supposed to be the neck, some people are not even neck, some wives are not even neck, they are leg, you know, and the man expects a certain form of loyalty. Mm. that if I belong to this political party just because you are my wife, you should agree with me. Because the question would be, if uh, you're not able to get people to align with you in your own family, how do you think you can manage the outside place when it comes to leadership? And it plays out even in churches. You know, there was a time, uh, at the time my in-laws were thinking of doing their own church. He used to be a pastor in Redeem, your Redeem, for many years. And then, you redeem, honey. And as your Redeem now, yeah. for many years. <laughs> and with all the politics and everything, he decided to leave and get the um, blessing of Daddy Gio to set up his own. At that time, the conversation was, the whole family must go with me. Mm. even when we didn't agree like mm. we don't get it we, they didn't call us with you do your <laughs> thing there was this I am the man and if I am the man of the house the whole family must go with me he didn't even let his wife have an opinion in that that's what I see because the typical African man believes that um, if I cannot get the buying of my family members I'm seen as a failure on the outside that's what's playing out here and no matter how much you disagree inside the house you must show a united front on the outside now when you now bring politics to it you believe you belong to this party i belong to this party and two of us are going home in the same you know and everybody's wondering he can't even convince his wife to belong to his own party can he convince us can he do this can he do mm. that so i think that's where we need to be very careful then the permission thing mm. i will not lie to you except you're a woman that has two heads you must learn to take permission from this our menu. Even those ones that speak English that you expect, she oh, it's okay. She has a no, lie. When the, the uh, kogide, when the crocs is down, <laughs> when the chips are down, yeah. you have to take permission from your husband. I'm talking from experience. Yeah. As work 
as they look like yeah. they are woke. You know, there are some decisions that I have to say, baby, please, can I? <laughs> or else, nothing, nothing. They shut it down. Mm. And there's nothing you can do about Interesting. it. Interesting. We'll come to this permission part. Let me hear your thoughts on this because there are lots of people that are divided, especially seeing spouses divided. I mean, I was in the meeting just a few days ago, and one of my colleagues in the meeting was saying that her husband is completely against this how old that, that they, 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 they keep fighting. Hmm. And she's trying to convince him, he's trying to convince her, and they're divided on this path. Hey. So it's across, across parties. Boss, so. What are your thoughts on this so political division? <laughs> <laughs> the way politics is run in Nigeria, you cannot be divided. Mm. Yeah, because it's about salary in Nigeria here. It's about money. But if it was about ideologies, you cannot share, always agree. So there will be division, but there must be respect. I say that because the way my own family runs, we don't necessarily agree on a lot of things. We just respect each person's side. I am a very, very, I would say, full opinion kind of woman. And imagine that in an Islamic marriage. So my husband is constantly faced with, <laughs> Nima, say what you think. I know you don't want to hear it. Because I really don't think what you think. Mm. We don't think the same all the time it has never been i've always had a mind of my own and so when we come into the home especially when it concerns the kids it will be like and see make sure hmm, that i know what exactly you want to do imagine that it now comes to politics we don't always agree mm. so uh, yes if it was so about in this situation of permission what you, do you think like, yeah. if you were in that woman's shoes would you take permission because you now want to collect double government you, see, eh? you will not take permission Fortunately, that that's why i say why did woman marry that kind of man exactly no they know 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 you know why because me now when it comes to my career and things i just i just tell him you know you can't know these things you didn't study law let me inform you this is what and this is why i'm going ahead i'm not telling you come and give me permission of what you don't know mm. do you understand when it That's comes to angle. when it comes to banking or economics and statistics and all of those things i pipe low in fact ordinary mass for the past two weeks uh, no, ordinary no, no. mass it, about i something. allow him i say bros please help my life it's not my and no life more. Mm. and he'll be like i can't you know no basic i, say, I don't know two plus two can be ten i don't really know help my life because it's not my it's not my strength mm -hmm. so we look at it from that area of expertise and strength if it comes to politics he doesn't know politics the way i do <laughs> and i will tell you okay, you're entitled to your popular opinion uh, but you see when it comes to these things i would school you because i have experience i've run offices in school while i was in school not just you know i have run political offices and held political offices and you know, i have a basic experience of it and we cannot all, i have clarity on ideologies I know what I be believe in. Recently, we were arguing about a system that works across regions in Nigeria, and he didn't see it like that. Mm. And I kept explaining, why would somebody leave their region and come and sell to you that one region's uh, uh, way of doing things is bad? Because they've not solved their own. If you want to criticize, you criticize from within, from your own. And well, you know, you know we, let, I, let, let, let like that. the point of this United Front that BC said earlier. Because mm -hmm. I remember that I was telling BC, or I think I said it on show, where there was a fight many years ago that in my house we had and till tomorrow my husband still brings up this thing every any small fight that is how do that day that you is. just disagree I'm like, what is it in church they'll tell us that women stop bringing back story and they say now nah, you your own married now you the bring back <laughs> story from the past. what's your problem you know so the issue was that he was fighting a good cause but i didn't i i felt that there could have been another way to do it to do it so i was trying to calm him down but he was upset that how can I be coming that you should be supporting I should be him fighting I'm, like, I'm not like that I'm not a fighter uh, it's I'm not about being a fighter fight. I'm not going to be here be... even if you stand at his back and you're doing like this that's enough you don't no, need to say I, anything well, just be I like I just saying calm down I said brown calm down, calm down. <laughs> no, and, no you and, don't tell him to calm down in front of people no but, but please let's not go there you see give another instance United France <laughs> So the point I'm trying to make is so, that so, so, when you know your spouse is wrong, so for example, in your own mind, mm -hmm. the, this party or this political party or this ideology is going to, is wrong. You feel it's wrong your own way. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to say, boss, come this way. And both of you, can you both, can you both live successfully in the house when both of you believe two different things? Mm. This is what if this you, Oba is saying. there's a level of respect. Okay, yeah. no. The Oba is not mm. running for an office, so I really don't see... Yeah, but shouldn't he accept his but wife's decision? I, I'm going to come to the traditional thing. You know? Okay. I've not talked about why the wife must, and she can't as an Oba's wife. I'm talking about if the Oba was running mm. for an office, yes. he just didn't just belong to a party. His wife and himself can always... 
if it was about ideology, belong to different parties with different ideologies and what they believe. And they can come and bring together the ideas and it will still make sense if there's respect. But if you are running for an office, the woman has no business being in another party. The moment you're running, your husband is running for an office, for instance, if he was running for governor in his own party. Immediately you hands off. That's what you need the united front for. <sighs> Not be saying, I just be member of parties, fight on they but, happen. But ideology uh -huh. is personal. Yeah. Ideology is individual. That's the yeah. reason. So, right. so the we, thing is, we have not um, upgraded our minds to that level. We still have issues with people saying, I stand by this, and everybody's fighting you for not standing by what they stand by. Mm -hmm. We still have that issue. And we all came from homes and houses. Mm -hmm. So if I can have that issue with you, what makes you think if my husband stands on your side, I will not have the issue with him? Mm -hmm. I will. It's not about the marriage now. It's about mm -hmm. the fact that we are seeing things differently. I believe this uh, perspective is better. You believe your perspective is better. Mm -hmm. Nobody is paying attention to how exactly are you seeing your perspective. Mm -hmm. And even if I don't see it that way, can I allow you stay there and not stay That's there? That's why I don't agree with you now when you say that we've not gotten there yet. Because when we see it in sports, you are a man, you find, you are Anissa. We know we... we, 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 we no, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying that in reality... When, you've, when, when two guys mm. have different parties, mm. they agree that they are different. Yeah. They can argue. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that outside that, mm. they can't be buddies. But sports is di different because they are oh. not the one playing the sports. They are, they are spectators they are not, yes. of the sports. So when we finish the entertainment, we go home. We go to movies and I don't like what I'm seeing. You like what you're seeing. But we don't fight. We go home. Do you understand? Mm. But now you are the participators. Mm. You are inside Electric. the cooking soup. Electric. So, the decisions I take in this party will affect you. Mm. The decisions your party take, I may know some bad secret things that those people are doing that you, you don't know or yeah, you're you yes. not obvious to. And it's going to affect me or affect my family. Mm. And then I allow you. It's not possible. So there's even See, this, there's that a, fight that you, you mentioned, mm? Mm. when it comes to small, small issues, you can believe different ideologies and it's okay. Do you understand? Even in religion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when one person begins to move towards another angle from the original that we all started with, it's usually a major problem in the marriage because your ideologies are changing. Somebody believes, I have to pray five times. Another person is saying, no, I just sit down and meditate and I'm good. It causes a lot of issues because now two of you are in the same house, but you're now having different attributes but they which will mislead the children because they won't know who to follow. No, the no. stronger person, I listen now, Morayo, the stronger person will drag the kids. I don't, I don't agree The with person you. who has more influence over the children, yeah. the children will follow. Let me, let me, let so me. it causes a form of division. Okay, that's, that's Wait, what, so that's can I finish that your fight? Because I'm interested in that fight. I want to respond to this with thing With Mr. Brown. Wait, let me finish that fight. We'll come back to that. That fight. That was hmm? a long time ago. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling you for next time. Yeah. Don't try it again. You will stand at his back and do like this. Then when you enter the car, you say, but you know, you, did that you, one. you know, Senna, you mess up. And that's what we're saying. So when it comes to big um, positions mm. like this, mm. you must find a way to agree or get the permission I'm buying. See, I didn't want to forget what I wanted to say, but let me go on the break. Okay, when we <laughs> come back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV.
watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Thanks for staying with us. We are still referencing the story I took this morning in the papers uh, about the Oba in Okpe, Kamaruddin, who was saying that he was dissociating himself from his wife, who had picked a ticket from a different party. Now, I wanted to talk about this um, different religion, you know, that the fact that they can act, people with different religions can actually lead together. Because the truth is that respect for each other is what I'm trying to express here. I can respect you. You are this religion. I am this religion. I understand what you need to do. You understand what I need to do. And we can live together. Our children can be influenced by both of us equally. And because we've trained them to be adults and independent in thinking, they decide which one they choose to. And either one. So I've seen families where father is Muslim, mother is Christian, and they have like four or five children, and half are Christians, half are Muslims. It happens that way because... Everybody were raised in a, in, 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 in a home yeah. where they were <coughs> equally. They both parties had 50-50. And then they decided what, which one they wanted to go. And there was no hassle. Mm. 
Mm. So it's about you as a person respecting that my wife wants to be deputy governor under a separate party. And I respect her ambition. I respect her, what, what her drive. And I but don't want to kill that passion. Support. So I will give you the support. Fronts. I will give you the support as a husband in your party. But I am not a member of your party. Uh, but I will support you. You see the technicality of this thing. Mm -hmm. The husband now is Anoba, a member of a party. He normally, he's part is members of parties. Ah, you just, uh, you, you just talk for the story saying be. He said that the ruling party is. <laughs> <laughs> but saying. he's not officially a member. He's so just. No, no. He's just but he's affiliated. Sentimentally attached to the ruling party. That's why you are, when you're in. Uh, unfortunately, mm. the way we run traditional schools here, mm. you're on the payroll of the ruling party. Yeah. True. So his means of livelihood is say in that one party. Yeah. We are talking livelihood now. The wife now have ambition. <laughs> now, as a family, when so one person has such an ambition, that's uh, just as like I said, if it was a political, one person was running for office, you need to come on front. You need to show that you have your family's backing. That example that I she said. gave. Now that one, now in top. That's why you had to disown the journey. <laughs> If you're going to pass me, could I don't follow? You know, I'm not I inside, I'm not a monk. You know, but is it because possible for you? Not the way it is, we 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 watered. You see, this ideal, mm. it's not possible with the culture that we have. Mm. I'm not talking yeah. of the cultures of our tradition, the cultures of our system, our society, mm. where you know, there's a there's a uh, I don't want to call it a corrupt culture, where we cannot own. What we believe in, until what we, as a, because it, it can affect what we get mm. as a person. Let me take this call from Hassan. Hassan, are you there? Good morning, Moray. Good morning, sir. You're live. Go ahead, please. You, you know, Shani, I'm the anchor. You are an anchor, so you are trying to balance of things. Well done for doing your job. But you see, this issue of a wife, you understand? Contesting. Under an opposition political party, without you, the husband knowing, is an insult. And the husband can be deployed for that singular act you have seen. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened in the First Republic. Over Ola Teru, Ola Zagi of Owo, mm. was dethroned for taking side with Akin Tola instead of Owo. Mm -hmm. The father of the late Alasi of Oyo, Ajayani, was dethroned for being in NCNC rather than be in AG, the ruling party in Western Nigeria. Mm. So, you see, this issue, I can see the aggression. You people are looking at it from you wanting to put in there. Let me tell you a recent happening. Buhari, in 2019, Go and check the picture is there. He was grabbing to look at his wife, whether she voted for him or another person. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> we saw it too. So, <laughs> so, you know what? Well, well, no. okay. <laughs> you see, when we are talking this policy, leave this issue of of somebody going his own way. But Hassan, Hassan, like Hassan, I get that, and I get the history you you the precedents we've seen. What I'm saying that going forward. Shouldn't we respect each other's ideology? Shouldn't we begin to come to the conversation where we say in a home we can be divided and we can respect ourselves, but we still love each other as a family? Madam, we are talking <laughs> of consciousness here. Mm. This is the issue of understanding. Mm. You understand? Mm. If you are with me, you are with me. Mm. If you are not with me, let me know. Mm. Good morning. Ah, God See bless more. you, sir. That's God bless you. Record. If you are with me, you are with I me. Have Growing up, I have a family that, you know, were neighbors, close family that I saw mm. this issue of religion. Did you know that because their dad was Muslim and the kids later became Christian, I saw them mock their father at yes. his burial. Mm -hmm. mm. It was us neighbors who were doing the janazah for the late father who stood as his children. Mm. In fact, one of them was like, oh, what are they even reciting? He had no respect not to talk of love, because I know, I know that deep in love is a respect for your loved ones. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even show it at the barrier. So you, you see this debate we're having? It's a very tough one. It is. Me, personally, I couldn't take that risk ever not to have a clear front in my own when it comes to religious mm. issues. Because of that one experience, I saw it as in I lived with it. Mm. I did, they, they did not tell me the story. I cannot just mention the name of this family publicly. So sometimes when we see these things, it goes deep beyond. 
The sister of that man was a Christian. But she was crying, grieving doubly because of the way the, the brother's children treated her late brother. Mm. She was like, is it this religion that you are carrying that is up to this? Mm. They considered it a consciousness and they said, because their father never... And so he was condemned for hell. Mm. <clears throat> Let me take this don't question. Mashid from Abuja, good morning, are you there? Yes, good morning. You're live, go ahead please. Yes, uh, I'm a first time caller. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show. Yes, um, this topic that you are, that you are discussing, I, I think um, a wife or a family, they should, um, they should, they should have one uh, political view. Because they say husband and wife, they are one. So if they are truly one, they should, they should uh, harmonize their political views. Mm. And... Um, they should not be seen to be divided. Can a press can wife can a can a husband be the president and a, the first lady Abi. who have a, a different political view and belong to she another party? If she's party. supposed to <coughs> if she's supposed to be first lady, that means they share the same political view. Yeah. True. So if we cannot separate husband who is the president and first lady, how will they not belong to different political parties? So thank you, Mashud. So what we're saying is that in this situation. What we would have probably told her is, don't run for another, don't run. So, kill your own political ambition because you can't get it in your husband's party, obviously, because maybe there's a structure and you, they don't know you, you don't have any um, um, structure to put you in there. But, so you have now killed your own personal ambition so simply be because your husband is not in your party. You your, have to your husband keep what's most important to you. So, Prioritize. from time to time, we are faced with choices. Do I follow this my path or do I sacrifice it because of this marriage? Mm -hmm. We are faced with choices every day. So you decide. Because there's a reason for do not be unequally yoked in the scriptures. There's a reason for... Don't avoid all this fight, oh. Mm. There's a reason for it. Can two work together except they agree? There's a reason for it. Because it's been over the years that when there's a little discord, you are, saying, you are speaking English and saying um, we can agree, we can disagree and still be friends and still live together and all of that. Most of us know how difficult it is to disagree with our husbands mm. and have peace in the house. Mm. We know how difficult it is. When a man says, this is my stand, we know how difficult it is. So why are we going to be acting as if it's easy to just, you know, understand your own? And I'm also worried because, you know, when you're raising children, especially with this religion of a thing, mm. you confuse these children. Mm. You confuse them. There were some concepts I was bringing up in the house and my husband called me and said, we are going to confuse these children. You see this, your ideals and this, your new beliefs and everything. Please keep it in your hearts. Mm. Let us find a way to raise them in one. When they are adults, they can now choose the different aspects. Mm. We cannot confuse them. And I've seen because every religion will tell you, especially the foreign religions, when it was our traditional uh, religions, I've never seen where they were comparing each other. This is better. Come and join me. Mm -mm. In your town, in your clan, you have your religion that you are grounded in. In your, uh, con uh, your state and your culture, you have your religion. Nobody goes around preaching for you to live uh, worshipping Ifa, to go and worship Amadioha. I've never heard it. It was the foreign religion that came that had this way of proselyting where you can preach and convert somebody. So even in that house where you have a Muslim and a Christian, there will be a um, tussle for power. Who will be able to convince who mm. to join this okay. side? So that brings a form of division. Yeah, I get you. Uh, when it comes to politics, because we eat from politics, we know how politics runs here. If the paying master is where your husband is and you want to go and do something else, you have to find another person to feed so you. Yes, they okay, let me take this call from Olubim. Okay. I'll come back to you. Good morning, Olubim. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you so much for this uh, topic. Uh, there's always a little bit there to guys. Uh, you see, okay, I'm tomorrow. I would like to say that uh, you have to listen to what you said about uh, supporting your husband. I know a marriage of about 20 years that is having issues to now because the wife is not supporting. We talk about love. Most times in marriage, it's about partnership, and that is you have to support and be loyal to your husband. They do that as it may. Then the issue of uh, politics in Nigeria, we still practice sentimental politics yeah. in Nigeria. You know, I mean, like what um, my friend, the lawyer, 
keep saying she's my favorite. Um, she she said something, you know, she's always logical, maybe because she's a lawyer. When it comes to those things, the insult that she gave about the religion, that was very bad from those people. That was, but when it comes to issues, the other thing you know, is disowning the, his wife. Like the wife did not sit down with let's forget that thing that this western what people say uh, what do you call it now gender equality then what's the one the president of the united states for the clinton mm. the wife when he had issues the wife stood the same yeah true she didn't say i'm going to go and join the republican because of that she stood by him yeah that's support and that man will love that woman to death you I understand so you can't <laughs> Okay, I think we've been able to thrash this uh, issue. Yes, BC, uh, BC gave you know. an example yesterday when we were talking about a girl who had to step down for her brother. Mm. And I remember saying that, you know, it was, if it was her choice that she owned, no problem. So as a couple, Oba's wife is in uh, running governorship, uh, uh, deputy governorship in another party. He can come to his wife and say, this is how this decision you're making affects me. She can own it and say, I'm doing this for my family. Not necessarily, uh, no, I'm not an empowered woman. That, mm -mm. You're not stepping down for anybody. There's a goal. There's something you might, must prioritize. Some relationships are more important than others. Yeah. And you think, okay, I'm doing this so that I keep my home or I'm owning up this, this, this choice for the greater for the good. Greater good. Yeah. That way, not be say you drown because of say, somebody is uh, holding your mouth. You know? In a, you know, this is, we have to wrap up soon. In this story, I don't know the full story, yeah. but there's a possibility that she, this is maybe number five, number four, number six wife. You know how <laughs> Oba has plenty of wives. So yes. she doesn't feel that important. She doesn't feel like she's in the, in the real scheme of things. Mm. Maybe the first wife is the one that is, and the Oba, oh, mm -hmm. moving politicians and really enjoying the benefits, the dividends of this Oba ship. She now wants She's to maybe number herself. six or number seven. Mm. And she's thinking to herself, I'm my own my person. Yeah. I want to do my own thing. Hey, so bless you, go work out. resigned from the marriage. Exactly. Yeah. Just walk out, the and then you will not use the name. The yeah. You will not you will not do it in a way it would affect him. It's okay. You can say okay because of this decision. Now that's his choice. So that I must I must run for the deputy governorship. Mm -hmm. I know that I stand a chance. You can say okay, I leave house, leave the marriage, go and pursue your ambition, because and don't uh, let it affect him. Yeah. So that it's clear. Because if her party wins, we did not come back to come and say, ah, my wife. Well, he will yeah, best he say Lena. He's over now. now. You will be a lady. Let me take this call. Lawal, are like you there? Let's call on this matter. Who are you, Lawal? Are you there? Hello, Lawal, are you there? You're live. I'm very here. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning sir. Go sir. ahead, please. Yeah. Ah, uh, Morayo, this issue is a very tough one. Tough and I'll start from mm -hmm. you. Why you make your interest known about your APC or whatever? You know how people fell on you. Mainly because they are helpful. Ah, uh, your view. That is just your own personal issue. And people keep said, saying that, 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 that. We are not talking of a, a, a wife to a mother. A wife and mother is in the public domain. Or be a girl or be a girl. I so much keen to our discussion this morning. It's not very clear, but I think I got... Now I, and, I, I didn't hear it, though, that second, but I heard the first part. My intent, I don't, I think I'm not a party member of EPC. I don't know where this intention I was invited to participate in the media and strategy group of, of that. That is what, and, and, and it's a job I'm doing. So I, I'm, I'm, and I'm volunteering to okay. support. Not, I'm not a party member. So I, that's not, I want to be sure that's not what he said. But I think he said that I have well, declared. I didn't declare for anybody. Okay. Um, I think that is pretty much, um, in a nutshell, I, I would have loved for us to, it seems that we're not ready for that mutual understanding of each other. But I also hear the united front. Yeah. I also hear the marriage. fact that, especially in the marriage, yeah. we make choices. Life is about choices. Life yes. is about decisions. Life mm -hmm. is about uh, choosing which one to think. And I think that in life, it's not about sacrifices. Sacrificing for the greater good, sacrifices for, the, um, for, for, for your children and for the family. So in this situation, we would expect that the wife is able to understand the priorities in her family or the husband or, or the husband is also willing to understand the priorities maybe the new party the wife is is the real party mm. that will give him the, the political power mm. and influence the other so desires yeah, but he, he has never know it so he needs to see so one has to, one so somebody has to convince the other but either way two must agree to become one that's all we can take <laughs> on this segment when we come back we're bringing our guests stay with us we'll be right back
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC Communications Story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics. And you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will Thanks for staying with us. She's a trusted expert in work-life solutions for working parents and also the founder of Mother Honestly, a complete ecosystem reshaping the future of women and families at home and in the workspace. Welcome with us, Blessing Adesinya in the building. Thank you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. A little exhausted. Instead, <laughs> staying up with 
a baby. Oh, yeah. A one year old. Your last... You're nothing. One year old. Yes. Oh, she just yeah. turned one and we are weaning her off of formula. So, oh. yeah, it's, it's been Goodness. a challenge. Thank you, here. God. I have four kids. Oh, hmm. my Lord. <laughs> wow. Well, Age... Mariah's the um, youngest. So, my first is 13 and a half. My son is four and a half. My daughter is three and the baby's one. Oh, back to back. Oh, back to back. The gap. Oh. So the gap was really for my career. Yeah. You know, I had my daughter, the first one, you know, at, at an early age. So I said, you know what, let me focus on my career. Did that for, you know, nine, ten years and it was it then back to back. Give me pop in time. <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Good. It's a, it's by chance that I'm still standing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we heard about mother harness and we're thinking, what does this mean? What how did it start? What does, first of all, what does it do? Mm -hmm. And how did it start? So, Mother, honestly, we started um, in 2018. So, at the time, I was working, you know, in corporate America. Um, so, just backstory, I left Nigeria at a very early age and, you know, went to the U.S. to study chemical engineering. So, when I, started, when I finished my um, undergraduate degree, that was when I had Tayo. So, I went into the workplace with a baby. So, I was one of those people that, you know... I didn't have the same experience as most women, mm. right? Most women, we go, you're still single. You're sort of, you know, yeah. living your best life. Right. And eventually you meet a man yeah. and, you know, and you get married. Yeah. I literally walked in with a baby in hand. Right. Mm. And so I think that that really shaped my experience around what, how do, you know, what does the workplace offer women? Um, and so I started asking questions and I realized that nothing. Mm. I mean, pretty much you were just told to come sit your, you know, behind down and get cracking like everybody else. And so I started questioning, you know, the system. Um, and that was how Mother Honestly started. So we started with literally having conversation about how can we elevate this conversation around care in the workplace? Because, you know, it, it used to be that, you know, men would go into the work, men were in the workplace, right? And women stayed home caring for the kids and, you know, yeah. doing all of this work. And so they, were, they had unlimited time to do a lot of things. And so now that women are in the workplace, we're seeing all of that, even here in Nigeria, where women are getting more degrees, women are making more money. And so now that women are in the workforce, you know, the question is, how do we then ensure that a workplace works for everyone? Mm. That it not just works for men, but it literally works, works for, for women, women, works for every caregiver of all kinds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, w when you now found your experience, you know, walking into the workplace with your baby in hand. What did that tell you about what other women have gone through before you came into the space? Well, I, I think the first thing I thought was, how in the world did anybody not tell me? Um, I felt very betrayed, to be honest. I, was, I felt very betrayed, um, I, you know, because I thought, wow, everyone, everyone made it look easy, yeah. right? You know, you would see everyone, you know, in their nice makeup and they're wearing that pencil skirt. I don't know if you all remember, like yeah. 10 years ago, you were just to this, you know, nice suit, suited up lady. And so I was like, what? You all were going through this? Literally waking up in the morning, you know, I call it the morning grind, you know getting the kids ready. Okay, who has their lunchbox? Who has their backpack? All right, have you eaten? Did you pack Great lunch? Project. You basically do all of this work before you even start work. And I'm like, why didn't anybody tell me? Um, so I felt very betrayed by that. Um, and I think that that started, you know, I mean, my background is in engineering. So I'm a natural problem solver. And so I just went into problem solving mode. I'm like, so how do we how do, we do this? Because what I found was the impact, mm -hmm. right? in the workplace, more and more, you'll find that when women have kids, they're no longer respected mm. in the workplace. Mm. And so I started asking the question, you know, how can women be respected? So what do we need to do? In order what, what, to... what are some of the solutions you preferred so far? So in the workplace, is it to get more um, daycares, crash for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the workplace, or do you have more leave for women? What exactly are some of those things you think you've been able to help women to achieve in this, with this mother honestly? So what Mother Honestly have done is we work with women um, and we also work with corporations, we work with employers. Um, and so what we do is really try to understand the caregiving responsibilities okay. of people in the, in, the, in, in the workplace. Because, you know, a lot of, when I said four kids, right, you probably all assumed that my four kids were healthy, mm -hmm. right? You don't know if I have a special needs child. Mm -hmm. You don't know if my husband is sick. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have a clue. And that's what we found through our research. And Mother Honestly is... Employers just have no idea. So the first thing that we do is try to understand the caregiving care. I call it the care load of the organization. That way we can start to put in place systems and structures. Because we may find that we don't need crutch. If all your, um, the, all your employees have kids 
or, you know, over five years old, then a crutch is just a waste of our time, right? So understanding the needs of the organization and then being flexible enough to make changes as the needs change is what we found to be successful. So I'm a very communal person. I grew up helping my aunties. I remember when I was in the university, my auntie at the time was with um, Charms, one big company. Everybody wanted to work, and then she had a baby. And so they just called me from school. She has a baby. Go on, you know. So what, what I know is that everybody puts their hands on to help you make life easy for you. for you. So you have a younger sister, she's there. So when I got married, I didn't have that help, and that was my first shock. But I also understand leaving work for a while, then getting back to work. So what are, which of our ways here as Africans are you aware of? Have you found out? And which one have you deployed successfully? And how would you say it helps? Yeah, I think that, you know, to your, to your um, I, you know, I heard you mention the community. Mm -hmm. And not, not once did you mention a man, right? Of um, and that's because in our community, we depend on women for care. Yeah. Um, so whether that is a sister or, you know, um, the next door neighbor, it's more, more than likely a woman mm -hmm. that will step in and say, oh, let me help you with that child. Let me support you. Um, I think here in, in Nigeria, some of the... Some of the first things that we picked up, and we have, we, we're starting to work with a lot of companies and a lot of women, and some of the first things that we picked up is, you know, women here are actually doing a lot, especially in the workplace. Um, and they are, when we, we, one of the things that we did was gather data, because data is important. So in our data, we can see that Nigerian women are making more money. A lot of, some of the, in fact, <laughs> the average Nigerian woman is actually making more money than their partner. I don't know that we've done into the data uh, you know, on a national level. Mm. But the, the data that we collected, we are seeing that more women are making more money than, than their partners, mm. but they're also doing a lot of the house chores. Yeah. They're also the one managing the affairs of the home. And so some of the, the, the things that we've picked up um, in how do we support women in Nigeria is honestly the mental overload and the burnout. Mm. Women are burning out because they're doing way too much yeah. on the work front as well as the, on the home front. So a lot of the resources that we have is how do we support you? How do, we make, how do we help, you know, take some of those tax off of your plate? Is that outsourcing? Is that you having the right resources? Is that connecting with you, giving you the ammunition to go back to your employer and ask for, you know, some of these benefits? I know it's very tough. Mm. You know, in the U.S., I'm always like, go out there, you know, get it, you know, talk to your employer. But, over, you know, in Nigeria, you sort of <laughs> need to be strategic, right? Yeah, so you can't, you can't, you, can't <laughs> you can't just come out and, yeah, and make know, those, yeah. those demands. With you, here. Um, <laughs> you can't just come out and make those demands. But, you know, I also want to say that I see a lot of companies in Nigeria that are stepping up okay. um you know I, I talk to some companies and they're like oh we have crash we offer paid you know maternity leave mm. these are things that doesn't even exist at least you know in the united states there's no federal mandated paid leave hey, for example you, right what, what you said now just reminded me my first maternity leave i wasn't paid because i hadn't done one year in the organization before i get belly <laughs> <laughs> so i went home they, they we're just starting life everything was based on what you're getting what i'm getting and for three months i was not paid one thing but i wanted to ask you the question concerning um women's mental health when they're taking in so much mm. i had um, a family member who recently gave birth to a baby and she was diagnosed with, um, what's this? Postpartum depression. Postpartum de depression. She will see the baby she wants to. That was the first time I was meeting someone who mm -hmm. had that. Mm -hmm. And then she was expected to resume work while she was still in that state. In that state. She hadn't finished her therapy and all of that. Do you have, um, in all of these, your podcasts and conferences that you do, do you have that uh, space where you are catering to the mental health of women, especially those ones who are taking in so much? Absolutely. And we, so part of it is... A lot of people don't even have a language for it. Mm. And so part of what we drive is awareness. That's the first place, right? Because if you don't even know that you're going through something, mm. it's, you can't put your, you know, you can't name it. Then, you're, you know, you're, what we found is that a lot of women then, are, you know, they start imagining things or they start saying, you know what, it's just me. I'm the problem. I'm the one. I don't love this baby. I don't love my husband. Um, I don't love my work. But when... We have forums like Mother Honestly and our conferences and our podcasts and events. And we start having these conversations. They're like, oh, you know what? Actually, what I was going through could possibly be this, mm. right? And then they can take that back to their, to their, whether it's to their doctor, their pediatrician, whoever it is that manages their health. So, listen, you're doing a lot of making women aware of the things that they need to do. But the awareness to, you know, family members. 
for instance, postpartum depression is something strange to our mothers. Yeah. You know, they have a traditional way of dealing with it. It is 40 <laughs> days of Mugo, three months of Mugo, okay. it depends Super on whatever. Nice. So they have given you the support. Nobody understands why you don't want to see your baby. You're okay. You know, in picking you don't shop winch. You don't shop winch, you know. <laughs> so how are you raising awareness so that people understand and, and know the, the kind of support to give to a woman going through so? Yeah, so, so that is a tough one, the, the community piece. Um, because, you know, if you're not going through it, right, it's hard for you to even want to sit down and listen. So what we tell women is, you know, to take some of this information back to their, to their, to their partner mm -hmm. or to their community. I always say start with a partner. Um, that, that is always the biggest issue because, you know, uh, especially here in Nigeria, we are, we are traditional, which is great. I'm a very traditional person as well. But I think that we sort of need to start trying to balance things because, um, and I use this word, um, you know, if your partner considers you, right, then they want to help you even the load mm -hmm. and they want to help you get the support that you need. And if they're also aware of those situations, for example, this postpartum depression, your partner can say, you know what, please give my wife some time, mm -hmm. right? I think we have an issue here, right? And what we find is that society respects men, our society. So if the husband comes out and says, please don't touch my wife. Mm, everybody will right? We just had a baby and I think that there's something going on here. But, you know, over here we have this savior mentality that women are strong. Mm. Women can I'm do it all. Or they if your husband is ugly, you better pray, you find know? out. Or if your mm -hmm. husband is like, what do you mean? You just had a baby. Is that why you cannot cook, you mm -hmm. know? Hey, like so many issues. So you're working on the conference. So what exactly is the objective of your conference? Because when women gather, they always wonder, oh, the same old, same old thing. What are we mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. what, what, why is there a need to have a conference? I think part of the, well, this is going to be our Mother Honestly's first conference, and we are partnering with Lagos Moms, um, Yeti oh, Williams. Know, um, this is going to be their night. So we basically came amazing. together to collaborate on this. And um, one of the things that, you know, when Yeti and I met, what I told her was, I want us to challenge the status quo, right? To start bringing to the surface level these conversations. They are hard. They are difficult. It's hard for, you know, when I speak to some of some moms, you know, here in Nigeria, and I say, you know, talk to your husband. Why is this mm -hmm. uneven? They're like, ah, bless me. Oh, my God, you, you want go to mess my, you know, mm -hmm. you so want to scatter, scatter my house and all this, you know. So really, first, this conference is about having the conversation, those difficult conversations around equal partnership at home. I know that it's tough. But when I say equal partnership, or I, I, actually, I think we should, we should roll it back. Equity. It doesn't have to be 50-50, right? So having that conversation. And then the conversation about how do we elevate this conversation even in the workplace? Because part of how we're going to change the workplace is by demanding for some of these things. We can't just say, sit and accept it. So giving people not the, you know, um, the, um, oh, go to your manager and, and, you know, lay down all of these demands, but at least how do we start these conversations, whether it's with HR, with, you know, DEI. I hope, I hope you have experiences that you'd share to help women maybe relate, be able to relate the example. So my first child, there was a difficulty switching into motherhood because I dealt with infertility. And so for my husband, it was like, this is the crown. You don't get the baby. Can everybody just go back and so their house be is free? You know, and so I lost support for a while, for close to six months. Wow. And it was overwhelming. And I tried to communicate it, but there was no example until uh, an x-ray showed that my heart was swollen. Wow. Mm. And they, he started to beg at the hospital. He wouldn't <laughs> want to kill me because I had a baby. Jesus. You know, so the reality of what the, the, the possibility of losing mm. one partner came with that result. Right. If we did not have to get to the hospital to say this, no. I was having postpartum situations Position. and exactly. there was something physical to show mm -hmm. he would never understand how what this is so if women were yeah. sharing some of these examples mm. you know it will help other women who are going through it be able to relate and you know it's possible that this happens exactly to me would you have uh, you know yeah, and at the conference on saturday we're going to have breakout sessions and the mm -hmm. goal is for people to be able to share their own experiences. I'm going to give you an example. A lady sent me a DM and said, Blessing, I'm finally leaving, which I thought was weird because, you know, usually when I get DMs, it's, ah, Blessing, you want to scatter my marriage. So I said, okay, let me read this. And she said, you know, I have three kids and um, the baby was up all night. I said, well, you know, we, at least we have something in common. Um, but, you know, what ended up happening was, you know, she took the kids to school, of course, got them ready, went to, went to work. When she got back, you know, the husband was home. She met the husband home. She brought the three kids in and, you know, proceeded to serve dinner. So she grabbed leftovers from the fridge. The husband started fuming and complaining that, you know, you're serving nice me leftovers. leftovers. 
but you know she didn't say anything everybody carried on so they had dinner and she said okay can you take one of the kids to bed i'm really tired so apparently she's been the one taking all three kids to bed herself right so the husband said no because you served me leftovers leftovers mm. so therefore you are on your own and this is somebody that was already up all night so of course she was exhausted and tired and so these are again some of the examples of how as a society we need to start women need to start having these conversations one and then two how do we even get men in the room as well so that this is not a woman's issue mm. Right? This is a society family issue. issue. I was going to ask family you, maybe issue. it's time for us to do father honestly. Because <laughs> honestly. A lot of, a lot of, we spend so much time talking about the girl child. And now we found that the men, are, the, the boys are deficient. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. So we don't want to spend so much time with women also. Forget, for, forgetting that the men they also. stand up with the we need deficient them. men. Yes, we need men to also understand the challenges mm -hmm. they have in a face. So maybe they can make better decisions mm -hmm. in, in, in the corporate world also, especially when it concerns women. And I think it's also showing the value, right? So when I tell people, I say, you know, my husband is always like, listen, you have to think like a man if you want to solve these problems. It's also, how do you communicate the value to a man? right that you should be no, no man wants to go out there scrubbing toilets and you know mm -hmm. taking care of the kids they're like you know that is beneath me or that's somebody else's job right and, me, and, me, and that is because you know as a society we've just always assumed that women will work for free mm -hmm. that women will show up and they would you know they will have take our back i mean a lot of every society in the world right literally runs on the back of the unpaid labor of women mm -hmm. um, which is something that i'm passionate about but you talk about the girl child 160 million hours. That is the number of hours that girl kids between 5 and 14 spend every year in unpaid work. More than a boy. It's not like that is already happening in my house. More than a boy. And, and, you know, and those are the things. It's wow. also for we, as us women to challenge our assumptions. Why is it that it's the girl you're calling to do, uh, to do the dishes? Mm. And your son is sitting down doing watching homework TV. or watching so TV. Ball. You know, when I was growing up, you know, I was uh, the first four out of you know eight eight kids i was the third and i had brothers and you know they would assign me my work that oh bless you don't do dishes me i would just take off you know my mm -hmm. dad would call and then eventually i started wearing jeans and shirts i said you know what actually i'm a boy in this house i said you know what i'm actually a tomboy and i'm actually studying so eventually my daddy gave me a pass he was like ah, bless is doing well she's getting a's you know my, my, dad, my mom was like no she's supposed to be joining the other girls mm -hmm. so one day i finally stood up i said you know what how about you get your boys to do work yeah. in this house? And so since that day, you know, my mom, because my mom is also a feminist, but, you know, sometimes, if, uh, and, I, and the culture, the culture, you know, mm. my mom was like, you know what? You are actually right. Why, why does he get to have a pass? So, but what is the value there, right? And I'm going to give an example. I'm going to use my husband. So we went to, we had my daughter, my fourth child, and of course, I was pregnant. I always have C-section. So this is my fourth C-section. So of course, I told everybody, I put on Instagram, y'all, this is the last baby. Nobody can't do this again. <laughs> um, and then, you know, because that was the last one, you know, my husband was like, you know what? You cannot be going up and down the stairs. Let me take on more responsibilities. So, you know, it, it was one, scr you know, scrubbing the toilet, taking, you know, taking, giving the kids a bath. So one day I just said, let me stroll up and see what this is all about. You know, I strolled up and I saw, you know, him. My husband is a germaphobe. He does a better job than me. So he's scrubbing the bathtub and changing. And you notice that I already purchased from Amazon, you know, the bath um, mats, mm. toys, Baby. squeaky toys. Uh -huh. He has all of these different things. Uh -huh. And because the germaphobe is only beating one kid at a time, you know, and he rearranges everything when the first child is done. And then yes. he's getting under their nails. I say, ha. Yeah, because me, I would just <laughs> wash that. that. You have yeah. to see yeah. me beg myself. <laughs> and now they are singing. They have, you know, they have this amazing time together. And so, to me, that is the value mm. that we need to communicate to me. Mm. That is his humanity mm. that he can now take with him. That his children will remember forever. Yes, yes. they yeah. never forget. Because they do. He that's was the bond in time, mm. right? It is in these little things mm. that our humanity mm. develops. Think about the person who walked you to school on the first day, mm. right? Think about the person who, Please. you know. I'm presently being jealous of my husband. I heard the word BFF for the first time and he wasn't addressed at me. My house. One okay. BFF, best friends forever. And they did not address me. They did not address oh, me. Oh, the kids me. gave him that award. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. Because you see, they pay the uh, you know, attention to details yeah, when it comes. Do. When my husband takes care of the kids, yeah. 
he takes care. But me, I have too many things to do. I don't have time to sponsor any shine. You know where you get that you know kind of husband's from. Can we see that? Can we see that? This is why we all need to be sharing. You know, we need to be sharing so that we so know, know what is possible. Mm. Right? I mean, they there all the time. It's just a few times. No, so, <laughs> my, my so is the conference free? Are we coming there or just show up? We have to the conference, the conference is not free, but we do have some open slots. So if anybody needs tickets, please mm -hmm. reach out to us. We are at Prosper Summit. Yeah. Um, send us a DM, um, and we have some tickets that we can make available to a few more people. Um, but you know, we are honestly excited. I think what really excites us is actually the companies in Nigeria. Because me, I told, I said, I told Yeti, I said, I don't have money to come and be doing. Um, advertisements and stressing myself. Mm -hmm. So we went to employers and we were just very surprised. Companies were saying, you know what, we're sending oh, 20 really? employees. Oh. We're sending 30 employees. So to me, that communicates to me that, you know what, our that people are ready for change. Ready. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to hold on to that. Um, and we need to really drive, start driving that awareness of what is working and what is not. Mm -hmm. Because if not, we're just going to have a society where it's our it's women are exhausted, stressed, burned out. Awesome. And you know, we're African women. Is your father, father's people <laughs> constantly the the way way they, yeah, they are I look at my mom now. You know, I'm always like, why was that woman crazy? Cussing all the time. <laughs> I said, why was this woman crazy? You know, I, I, I just <laughs> look back and I'm like, my mom was always crazy. You know, she sometimes she even roll something mm -hmm. at us. And I, I remember, hey, I remember now. Misses. I remember now that you know <laughs> I, what I know now is that it's rage and resentment. Yeah, mm -hmm. resentment a lot of what I've seen with a lot of Nigerian women when we surveyed the women we surveyed. 50% came back and said they were doing more than their partner. Mm. Um, and another, you know, 20% um, said they think they, were, they are doing slightly. So let's just say 75% are doing way more managing the household responsibility. And so that creates rage, yeah. right? And resentment towards your partner. Because even that's some, not how we are wired. Mm. We are wired for the soft life. We're made yeah. from Adam. <laughs> from the rib. From, a, from, from the version. crude. We're made from finished products. And, and, and they're and meant to live the soft life. I, I, I don't life. disagree. I honestly don't disagree. I think that, well, you know, when I, one of the things that I tell people is we need to start thinking about self-care. Yeah. It's something that is a productive thing for us to do as women. Because I just see so many Nigerian women we are out there just... Doing it I'm for it. my darling. I'm like, my know. husband makes the first 10 million dollars. I'm out of here. I'm, just, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm just home. <laughs> you know, just having I'm telling you, you need it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's All a right. message online. It says, right. I will say it again. It's the mothers that raise the men. If we don't stop these gender roles in the house, yeah. mm. they won't get it. Oh, thank you so much. Blessing thank for you, joining blessing. us. So, yeah. we'll Amazing. definitely um, see if we can get some tickets for our viewers who are interested. She's going to be giving us some free tickets for some of our viewers. Um, was it's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank I would you. just hope that um, there was something you told me when I met you. You talked about you gave me a figure of how much mm. we're losing the GDP mm. that we could have been contributing into, into the Correct. economy Correct. if women are allowed to it work is, in the hours. It is 1.9 trillion dollars. Hmm. So that is the number of hours that women spend on unpaid work. Think about mm. that. That is more than the GDPs Some of countries. Some of countries. countries, like even the US. Mm. It's like six top countries. That is their GDP. That is money that we're leaving on the table because we refuse to monetize this work. We don't value it because women are doing it for free. Yeah. Right? The minute we start to value it, that is money that can now go into the GDP. And we can now start so monetizing. Pay you for, for cooking. And, 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 and maybe he, he, he doesn't have to be the one to pay, but at least we value it. Let's just even start with put, value. Put an amount to it. You know? Let's they start, pay me, they let's pay start me. valuing it. They because why, why, why should we assume that you know, a woman's work is free? Mm. It comes to the package. Yeah, it comes to, you know, so I was telling, ah, what, there was a man on Diary, um, diary of Niger Girl so that said that, you know, that his wife is, um, uh, is not making fresh food for him. Mm, yes. And I was like, <laughs> egg me. So, so hey, that's been on Twitter. <laughs> hey, hey, you know? hey, for those late night midnight cooks, you definitely yeah, do it. Uh, yes, before. You work everything else. That is else. all we can take on <laughs> I hope you learned a few things as we, we have. have a million. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye.